recording active. Okay, let's see. It is um, Friday, April 12th, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time. This is the Chaos Value Metrics Group weekly meeting. And uh, on our agenda, there's we have two points. Uh, one is to talk about research grants and the other is um, software development workflows for public metrics and I'm sure other things will come up. Is there anything else that people would like to put on our agenda for today? One of the things we discussed during the weekly meeting is that I owe the work group a pull request to add the focus areas to our repositories. And then I think we also talked about having an outline of the metrics that we want implemented, basically a requirements document. Yep. And I, th I thought about that and I have a, a point of view on that that we can talk about when we get into it. And maybe we can get into it now since we're talking about it. Um, does that sound good? That I, that sounds great, Andy. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, let's chuck through, or let's uh, let's do it. Okay. So we did we did talk about this on on Tuesday a little bit. Um, the idea of you know kind of being systematic about. Um, you know, to figure out what to target. Hello, Matt. Hi. Uh, being systematic about trying to figure out what type of metrics to target. And I went, you know, based on that, I went back and I looked at the focus areas that you put in our issue tracker, Georg. And there's, there's five of them. Everyone can look at them. And after thinking about that a little while, I thought, oh, you know, you could have a long discussion about some of these. You could, you could debate about what does it mean and so on and so forth. Um, I think it would be useful just to pick the simplest thing out of that list and just say, let's just focus on that. Um, I'd like to see an end-to-end -end flow of, of tooling and, and software and, and metrics. And once we have an end-to-end -end flow in place, I think then we can, you know, just prioritize which things we want to do and, you know, depending on resources and availability of, of people to, you know, do software implementation, we'll just work top down. So um, I'd like to discuss a, that as an approach. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question about the approach? Just make sure I understand it. Yes. Um, is the idea then that, so is the idea we would, like we define a metric and then the, is it uh, the immediate step then is that we work on the tooling for that metric, that that's a constituent part of the working group. So we're not going to talk about 30 metrics, define them all, and then have an implementation. But I, I hear you describing more of a working piece of software as opposed to code that reflects the logic of the metric embedded in the metric itself. So in other words, are you thinking, I think you're thinking about a system, not a Python script. Well, I guess, you know, there, there's two, there's a couple of different ways we could think about our work here. And there's One, no judgment either way. I just wanted to make sure I understood. Right. So the, I think there's a couple of different ways we can think about our work. One way is we could say, hey, our mission is to define specifications and requirements that somebody else will implement. Mm -hmm. Another way we could think about our work is we could say, hey, um, we're creating a framework and the framework is requirements, but it's also working software. And um, uh, I have a bias towards working software. And the, and the reason why is um, I just think you just learn so much when you have hands-on with working software. I mean, it's like a reality check. It's, um, it, is, um, it, it makes you think about things in a, in a different way than if it's if it's just sort of paper and 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 discussion about what would be great mm -hmm. to have, yeah. Uh, so I really like having working software, and I think 
in my opinion, it would be really nice as an approach for this group just to get an end-to-end -end flow of whatever that working software is. And then once we have the end-to-end -end flow, then we can talk about, um, you know, just making revisions step-by-step. -step. And, and, and I also think that if we have an end-to-end -end flow with working software, it might be a little bit easier to provide opportunities for other people to come in and contribute. And uh, so those are some ideas that I have. I'll chime in. I totally, I think it's a great idea. Personally, I, I think that putting, I always kind of think of it as putting pressure on metrics, mm -hmm. you know, from a software perspective is a great thing to do. Well, I mean, one of the things that drives me to work on Augur is that it's hard to really know what these metrics mean and whether or not and how they're useful if I don't have a system that shows me what that metric looks like and can, I can show it to people and and then I can see who consumes which metrics. So, I mean, it, it as a software developer by background, uh, it totally makes easy, it makes it easier for me to think about what we're doing. Right. <clears throat> okay, so it seems like we all agree that that would be nice. Um, and then, mm -hmm. you know, the other, the other approach, the other thing you can talk about is, well, if we want working software, what's the best way to do it? And um, uh, one way is, you know, we could like be, we could have like real engineering purity and we could think through, you know, a bunch of different alternatives and come up with a way that we, th we think is, you know, like ultimate best, you, you know, might almost call that like German engineering approach. And then there's another approach where we could just say, let's just take what we got, you know, bag a, a bucket of parts and just trying to just trying to assemble it, you know, in in as fast a way as possible. And I like the latter approach. I'd like to just look at what we've got and figure out what is the simplest thing we can do with the tooling that we have. Let's just get that working end to end in a way that's repeatable, in a way that you know just stands up. And then um, let's start, you know, let's start running metrics through it and just expand on that little by little. I mean, that's what we've been doing with Augur, and that's, okay. you know, I mean, I know Augur has been complex for you to set up. Um, I'm not saying it has to be Augur, but that's, that's certainly how, I mean, I would approach the work is to say, okay, these are metrics we want, and I, I would just go put them in Augur. <laughs> so that sounds awesome to me. And, and by the way, I was able to get Augur set up. It was complex, but so what? Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, that's the spirit, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it just, I was able to follow the directions and go end to end. And um, so I'd really love to, you know, if, if everyone thought, oh, that's an okay starting point, I'd, I'd really love to just start there and then ask, what is the simplest thing we can do so that it, like there's maybe a, a, like a usable utility or a website or just whatever so that we can start collecting, you know, real value metrics, simplest possible thing, and um, and just build on that. Are you proposing like a, a sample context? Well, you know, we could, um, okay, if you look at the <clears throat> focus areas, you know, the one that kind of jumps out at me is labor cost as a, as a value, as a focus area for, for value. And labor costs can be expressed in, you know, so many ways, but I, I think the simplest way to express labor cost is just, you know, number of commits and, um, you know, number of commits per person. And you could almost say that a, a commit, you know, we could almost think of a commit as like a form of currency and just, you know, just let that be, uh, you know, the simplest you know, without any exchange into, you know, dollars or, or euro or yen or anything like that, we could just say, oh, the yen is, the, the commit is like the simplest form of currency. Let's just start tracking that, you know, number of commits, and then maybe number of commits by person and number of commits by organization. That would be, that'd be like a really crude, you know, level of economic value that we could start with, maybe. So then... I would suggest too, kind of doing another thing in parallel. So if I'm looking at the issues, I'm guessing you're talking about the issue 14. 
labor investment? Yes, yes. So at the same time, I think we should create a pull request that would add labor investment as a focus area and then build out that focus area a little bit with the goal of that focus area and the questions. And then when you're talking about these specific metrics, what questions those metrics are answering as well. Yeah. So um, I think that'd be awesome. You know, we've got, we've got five areas. Um, I like the idea of picking, you know, just taking a selection of one of these and see and saying, what can we do with this mm -hmm. one area? And, you know, let that be sort of a template. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's try and implement this in software. Let's, let's sort of, you know, pick something that gives us the biggest bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. And then once we have that, then we've got kind of a model and then maybe we can apply that model to the other focus areas. And yep, I agree. And I think focusing on one focus area, using focus twice in a sentence. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a good idea too, especially if we're starting to think about um, releasing the metrics, you know, yeah. as we, not just for this working group, but as a chaos project in its entirety, you know, we're going to be releasing metrics that come from the focus or from the working groups. And so really, at least in this first release, having the value working group really even just have one focus area that might have a few metrics, those yeah. might be good candidates for that initial release. Yeah, I think that'd yeah. be good enough, you know, to say. I want to build on that idea and say that right now, when you go into the issues, there is a Google Doc associated. So what we could do today is decide on one focus area to drill down into and then collaboratively work on the Google Doc. And then after the meeting, we can create the pull request with the content we created today. That's a good idea. So it sounds like labor investment is the candidate. Mm -hmm. So everybody follow the, go to the issue 14 and follow the link to the Google Doc. Okay. So I, I have some suggestions of or proposals of, of things that we could uh, track. Commit count is one. Uh, maybe pull request count is two. Um, and then maybe the third one is tracking issues. Uh, issue close rate. You know, pick your pick your favorite. Uh, <clears throat> pick your favorite sort of metric around issues. And I think. In, in my take, that'd be enough to get started with. I mean, there's a hell of a lot we could do with that. And the data is out there, it's it's accessible, it's public. Yeah. Who's typing? Is this Georg, are you typing? Yep, that's me. Okay. Yeah. And I've already, I've already run lines of code and labor investment is just on a bunch of stuff with um, labor estimation. So using this, uh, SCC tool that I think I mentioned on a previous call. So integrating that output into Augur would be, and that's just an integration effort, right? We don't have to build anything that doesn't exist. We just have to use it to develop metrics. And I think then we're going to get into the discussion about how to parameterize labor investment, right? Because right. there are a lot of different ways that people think about it. Um, I have one question on this. Yeah. So, for example, we have taken this commit count, issue count. Are they not overlapping with the uh, uh, other working group uh, matrices? And how can we like have synergy, like not have overlapping matrices? So I have a thought on that. While we already identified in chaos that we will have overlapping use of metrics the value working group is putting a different focus on these than the growth maturity and decline, or not, sorry, evolution working group, because we are focusing on the organization and what value it provides to the organization or what value they put into it. We talk about labor investment. So the core of the definition might be the same, but we are adding a different focus here. 
Yeah, that is helpful. So I'm look. I did a cross check. I'm just building these names out a little bit. Um, none of none of these metrics right now. If you're taking a look at that Google Doc, none of them are actually in the metrics list, which is fine. To totally fine. I'm just saying that none of these have been brought forward before. So if this is the pull request that goes into value, I will just add these to the metrics list as well and then mark them as value metrics. Yeah, I think that's the thing to do. Unless, could somebody double check me? Kevin, are you on? Could you just go to the metrics page? And to the metrics page. So while we're doing this, I have a question about these. Where does labor investment come into? Are we just saying we contributed that much to a project or are we actually having a goal to put an investment dollar amount to it? I have an opinion. Uh, hey, Kevin, could you turn off your microphone? Or mute it or yeah thank you Georg somebody thanks so I have an opinion on that one is um, just just tracking just basic activity levels I think would be um, a proxy for economic value and you could express like like I said before I mean you could you could almost express um, uh, you know something like a commit or a pull request as a as a, a unit of currency and you could use that to, you know, do comparisons across organizations. So it'd be, it would be interesting, let's say, if you're running an open source program office to compare your level of activity to your peers. And then the other thing you could do, once you have that level of activity, uh, potentially you could, you could plug in your own valuation numbers. Uh, for example, you might... I, I'm sure we're going to be able to find uh, studies that that show you know how much time it takes to write a line of code, for example, or how much time it takes to you know do a, a commit on on average, and um, you know based on that you can back out to an hourly rate, and then you know you can you can you know generate a, a total um, economic value. You know, just just based on um, you know paying like an hourly consulting rate, and different organizations are going to have their own numbers. You know, so if you go into Facebook, if you go into you know Google or Comcast or one of these companies, of course, you know they've got, they've got their salary data. You know, they they know how what their aggregate um, salaries are. They know how many lines per code you know lines per coder. Are, are produced and you know they can come up with their own numbers which might or might, might not agree with academic studies but just having um, to me having like the baseline of the number of commits uh, the number of pull requests the the number of issues the issue close rate that sort of thing will allow people to plug in you know their own assumptions about how much each of those things are worth and then and then that would generate an economic value Sean, do you have thoughts on this too? Because I, I know you're. I mean, no, no. I was, um, like, I was just listening to what um, Andy was saying, and I, I agree with him completely. I think we also have, I mean, uh, in, in addition to the commits, like you could also evaluate just the total cost to build by looking at the lines of code. We could snapshot lines of code over time and apply Kokomo-like models over, over it. We could also apply, and I think, I think if I'm listening correctly and understanding the same way what what you're saying we could do uh, labor estimations for the contributions as they come in beginning on a day. So not just what's the value to create this whole project, but what's the value being contributed to it on a regular basis. And I can see some real arguments for that actually being like, what's, you know, if you want to know the ongoing investment, looking at the commits and the contents of the commits are a way that we could do that. Is that what you were saying or did I just riff? <laughs> No, that's that's what I'm saying. Uh, okay. I think that'd be a great way to get started. 
So if I'm picturing this, that we are getting the commit count by organization, and then we assume that people want to apply their own assumptions, like how much time, how much money is that time worth? Would that be something already implemented in the software where they can just type in these assumptions and get a number calculated? Or is that something they would have to do outside of what we provide? To me, that'd be a phase two. You know, a phase one might be just exporting like a CSV with, um, with number of lines, number of commits, and then you could import that into your own spreadsheet and, and, um, and you know, add your own labor costs and, you know, do the math sort of outside of the software. And then maybe, uh, maybe a phase two would be, you know, some sort of a web form where you can plug in your, your assumptions, your labor costs, your amount of time to close an issue and, and, um, uh, yeah, I think that's a, personally, I think it's a great idea. I think, and I yeah. think that's right in the wheelhouse of what Augur can do. Yeah, I know. We're, um, yeah, and I'm just thinking like, I know how to do that already. So, yeah. <laughs> um, it's just putting it in the pipe. I've actually done it. I just haven't put it into Augur yet. Right. So a lot of times what happens is somebody wants to see something, I do it and then we put it on the Augur list. Yeah. Um, you know, One of the things we're doing with Augur that I think will be nice is it's we're combining right now we use Facade, GH Torrent, API. So we have all these data places that we get things. And we're actually going to be, we're combining right now our own, basically creating our own data model in Postgres that we're just going to feed everything into and tag it with its uh, data source of origin and the tool that brought it there so yeah. that, that um, you can do all. And in parameterizing things like cost, I think a lot of times people might want the data and then they'll take it in the spreadsheet and download it, which we allow. And they'll probably want to dink with it there more than they'll want to like fiddle with parameters in a, in a software system. Yeah. But we could do that if that becomes important. Well, one thing that, one thing that might be interesting in a phase two, you know, for the parameterized data is allowing to people, allowing people to plug in their own parameterized data sort of anonymous and um, you know, having some sort of a venue for people to compare their assumptions. You know, it might be interesting for you to look at your labor costs and you know compare it to your peers. In a you know in a software tool. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great idea, Andy. It's <laughs> a really good say, idea. It's, <laughs> you two are actually speaking the same <laughs> language. <laughs> Knowing both of you, <laughs> pretty funny. Like in terms of doing comparisons, this is again, I think right in the yeah. middle of Augur, which is yeah. a, a yeah. move towards doing comparisons. Among the, and the comparisons Andy's talking about, these are ones that would let, because I think a lot of people are making guesses about what their labor costs are and they're using certain assumptions. And I think seeing other people's assumptions will inform my assumptions over time. And, and like you said, we have to, I think they need, a, of course, a, a way to trust that those contributions will be anonymous. Otherwise, you know, why would I give you my labor cost estimates <laughs> if you're a potential competitor? Right. Yeah. So it seems like we all agree. I think so. Yeah. Um, seems like Augur is going to give us most of what we want. And, and by the way, uh, put, putting it all into a Postgres database just seems awesome. You know, just, just a, as an architecture, having things feed into Postgres where there's a, you know, you can, you can tag the source and, and um, you can extend with new sources over time. That, that just sounds killer. Hey, um, Andy and Sean, are you both in that document? for the chaos value focus area labor investment? Yes. Yes, I am. Can you just give it a quick scan? Because I think the the goal here is then to, listening to Georg, basically just take this document and roll it into a pull request. And so if we could avoid any conversation later in the pull request about clarity, that would be helpful. But you could just make changes here, obviously. So. <laughs> Uh, 
I'm just clicking now the link to the other document. Okay. Um, you just appeared. How do you know who it is? I only see anonymous animals. I just I saw anonymous. somebody new appear, and he has said he had just joined. So I. Yeah, yeah, I was reading really together those two important pieces of information. <laughs> so I, I think this is awesome. Okay. Yeah, the um I would say the the just to make a note that the issue count and the pull request count are not stored in the Git repo, so we would pull those from whatever issue tracker the the team used. And I guess I guess pull requests ultimately do show up as merges in in the Git repo. I haven't. I, don't, I should. I, I don't know if they're distinguished from other kinds of commits in the Git repo log. Do you know, Andy? Um, I can time it. I have calculated all of three values during different other researches, but I can easily calculate number of commits, number of issues, number of pull requests. Just from GH Torrent, right? From GH Torrent, um, yes. for sure. But from the GH Torrent includes the uh, issues and the pull requests from yes. the Facebook's API or from sorry GitHub's API. It, right. Um, the facade uh, auger work is all straight against the repo, and that's. I just have to look and see if pull requests can be made are visible in some form, in the Git repository. Otherwise, we just have to know what they're using for managing those. Okay. And, and, and issues often do have a diverse issues are often not on GitHub, especially for projects that have been around a while and have had long had issue trackers. That's not a problem to get them. Yeah. Um, but we just need to some of the I, I just that's just more of an implementation note, I suppose. It doesn't really affect the pull request. No, it's more of implementation. Okay. I think that note um, would go on the detail page when we create the detail pages for each of these questions. But I've captured in the meeting minutes for now. So I think the next step is to take um, this document, the labor investment document, and issue a pull request into the value repository. And then is the is the hope to kind of work through all five of these metrics? Or is there a an order? It's just first one first and then second one second. Um I mean I think well like I said, the things that are off of the Git repo for sure are, yeah. are will, will be implementable most quickly. Okay. I think I think we have with pull requests to do it with GitHub, I don't is we can we have that data and can get it and that's okay. not difficult. I think where we have issue tracking in other environments, that's just something that we have to have people tell us about the repository or we have to know it from somewhere. Okay. That's all. Okay, so it kind of sounds like get this pull request in, start kind of um, thinking about the tooling that deploys, I'll just say all five of these metrics. Um, and I think from that, I would guess from that, um, from that effort, each one of these metrics pages, or each one of these metrics then gets a detailed metrics page behind it. Mm -hmm. So there's and kind of another another document below here, which um, does anybody have one handy that they can show in the chat? A document below here, what do you mean? Georg, do you have a, a template? I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. Oh, we'll request it. No, he'll put it in the chat here in a second. Yeah, I am looking at the what the um, DNI is using as a yep. template, and I'll post it in the meeting minutes. Can you put it in the chat too? Yes. This is the one that 
DNI uses, I, I'm not quite sure, does uh, evolution use the same template or you might have tweaked it? Put it in the chat. This is this. That's pretty close. Ours, ours is uh, tweaked. Kevin, you're really hard to hear. There, it's in the chat. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay. All right, now we're looking for a volunteer to make this edit. Is that what you're asking for, Matt? Oh, uh, it's mostly just to put it on your radar. Okay. But there's there's going to be additional detail that kind of resides below. But we also have, Garrick, what you're sharing here is I'm a little confused as to what you shared. I just went to the evolution repository and Sean and Kevin, maybe you can help me understand this. Is this the equivalent template to what I shared in the diversity inclusion work group for capturing how a metric is defined and calculated? What you shared from evolution was what I was thinking. What you shared from DNI seems to be a, an overview of the focus area. Okay, I, yeah, maybe diversity inclusion has one step in between focus area and- I think they do. As a metric, yeah. yeah. So for Andy and Sean, and actually everybody on here, the one that Georg's um, shared, the chat, the second one that points to the working group GMD. Mm -hmm. So that description, use case, formula, sample, yeah. that one. So just, just again, not to do it right now, but just to put it on your radar that that text box, mm -hmm. you know, that's going to be the pull request that's going to kind of define these goals, question metrics. Right. Each of the metrics themselves will be given a page based on that template. Okay. This is a good um, good template. It's from Evolution, so. Yeah. Well, we did something. And yes, so it's the. You're 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 welcome. Yeah, Kevin. <laughs> hey, Kevin is well done, Kevin. Yes. So then the idea is is so I mean in a in a perfect world for the release of these metrics as part of the version 1.0 from Chaos, you would have the focus area, which in this case is um, called labor investment, and you would have this this page that is the name and the question and then each one of the names or the metrics here would have an associated template page and so if if you can hit that bar then those those are candidates for release And some of these should be fairly straightforward, right? They don't have to be. <laughs> these are <That's> right. narratives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's it. So again, it's not to be done now, just to put on your radar. And, and these template pages too, I'm, I'm guessing that as Sean, as you're taking a look at deploying the metrics in Augur, mm -hmm. the, these template pages will kind of come in super handy. Yeah. And they'll kind of, they'll, they'll auto populate <laughs> based yeah. on. Yeah. The metrics. The yeah. Once we update our metric status page, once the way we express metrics settles down, which it almost has. Yep. When, and maybe too, even for like next Friday's meeting. Mm hmm. If you've deployed any, we could actually start filling out some of these detailed pages just straight in the meeting here. 
Yeah, that's a good idea. Kind of like what we did with the pull request for the focus area. Yeah, I like that. We'll do, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have, have one done. Okay. <laughs> so then I guess the pressure would be on you to kind of start thinking about these metrics in Augur. Okay. Uh, Is everybody tracking what I'm talking about? Just make sure. Okay. What else is on our agenda? I apologize, I have to leave in a couple minutes because I have another meeting to run to. It's a meeting of my own doing. I'm well, stupid. <laughs> Tell us what you really think about that meeting, Sean. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, it's for students. I'm helping them get our, to understand their semester projects. I'm using open source for undergraduate junior computer science students and the whole idea of them not having an assignment handed to them with all the steps is been a little mind blowing for them the last few weeks. <laughs> so, all right, uh, other agenda items? So I, I'd like to um, start a discussion about the possibility of using our value work um, to, as you know, kind of the nucleus to write grants. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that something that's possible? Is that something that's desirable? Is it interesting to people? Maybe we could just start with that. I'm always interested. I'm an academic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, likewise. Um, um, I'm trying to think of who the, uh, who the agencies are that would be interested in kind of these economic issues. Sean, do you know in the yeah. NSF if there's... Certainly SBE has things that look at organization and culture and, and value. I, I think if we, you know, this is the kind of thing that might be appealing to foundations that are tied to corporate strategies in some way, um, or maybe even a corporate sponsorship of some kind. It's because it could serve a value for them, but but NSF SBE certainly social behavioral health. They just put it in the chat. That um, that they probably have something. I don't know that. I think the science of organizations call that. I don't think yeah. it comes around for another year. No, it's six months. The six months is yep. is a good target for something like this. I'm just doing a quick uh, Google O while oh, the clock ticks. Um. Why don't I, um, Andy, to your to your question? I think I will talk with my grants folks here. They're not people who have money. They're people that help find money. Yeah. Um, I'm just kind of, because this is not a space that I normally write into, but they would be more familiar with the landscape of, you know, the agencies and the different programs that they have. Yeah. The, um, here's, here's one that's uh, coming up for changes in STEM professions for gender equity. That's SBE. Um, I can see, I can see framing value metrics as a contributing factor to telling the story. It's not a direct hit, but. No, and it looks like the, there's, it's just a letter of intent too. Yeah. For now, which, which is always a lower bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So putting a letter of intent together for that, I think is something that we could do. So. Yeah, for those of you that aren't familiar, so the NSF has calls and they'll ask for letters of intent, which are usually just a page or two. Um, and what they're trying to do is filter 
fit with the program. Um, so it helps, it helps kind of um, overcome a hurdle if you just allow everybody to submit <laughs> all the time. It kind of streamlines the process downstream a little bit for the NSF. Mm -hmm. um, and so this one that Sean sent out, if you'll see, has a letter of intent on May 15th. And so then you submit it and then they kind of give you a red light, green light with a full proposal due, looks like October. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think for, I think we, I, I think, you know, that's a good letter of intent to write just to see if what kind of feedback we get. Yeah. And it would also be a, a nice just forcing function for all of us to kind of articulate ideas. And it's not a ton of overhead. Mm. We got that in there. Okay. Uh, and then I found another one for straight up economics, which isn't until August. And it, it's more of a clear direct hit. Um, You know, labor economics, industrial organization, inter industrial economics, international economics. I mean, this is a, these are, these are, this one's like a direct hit. Like, I think we could write a strong proposal around that one. Okay. So if I can summarize, it sounds like two thumbs up for interest on pursuing grants. Yeah, and I just I don't think abstractly about money, so I just, I just went and looked for some real quick. <laughs> so, and I'm sorry I got to run, but um, okay. I'll talk to you all next week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, grants is totally new to me. I've never done anything in this space. Um, my reaction just just based on the last few minutes of discussion is that kind of looks and feels like a like a sales process you know you've yeah. got a, you've yeah got and, a, and an a, opportunity pipeline and um you know you're qualifying where you want to spend your energy and then there's yeah. actions so yep and you're trying to fit with the programs that already exist yeah there's a, a huge dash of luck <laughs> on these things right. as well <laughs> right so um, uh, to organize, you know, kind of like sales campaigns, for, for lack of a better word, uh, you know, I've always been a big fan of like just a Google spreadsheet. Yeah, that's what we use. Okay. Or, or Google Docs actually is what we use. But if you, if you have kind of a different approach. Okay. Uh, just a table, you know, list of potential opportunities, due dates, mm -hmm. action items, that sort of oh, thing. Oh, yeah, sure. No, that's fine. I think... Um, yeah, it'll take a little bit of digging if we want to really hone in on the value component. Mm -hmm. Mostly just because um, that's just not a space that I think Sean or I have been in. Okay. Not because it doesn't exist. Okay. Well, the, the real question is, is that something that you guys would be interested in pursuing? Well, sure. As long, I mean, it, as long as it retains support for kind of this broader work around yeah. community health, Yes. Then a hundred percent. Yeah. So, I mean, part of, part of writing these grants too is kind of making it right, making the appeal to fit with the program and then trying to, to fund the efforts of the folks that are included in the grant um, while keeping everything cohesive and, and tied together. So if it ends up looking too fragmented, it may not do very well. So as long as it, it maintains the interests of all involved. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there'll be, so the idea would be, you know, there's got to be some sort of a selection function where, you know, we can decide, oh, this is something we want to go after, or this is something that doesn't fit. Yeah, so like in the case of any of these, say, economic oriented grants, like personally, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to do a deep dive into the economics, me personally, but I, members of the team can, mm -hmm. right. and then what I would be interested in is how the results from that deep dive help us understand community health more broadly. Right. 
right? So then I would be in the position of kind of translating the work that you're doing to the larger picture of community health. And a lot of you would be really interested in kind of building out the capacity around value. That, that's my first thought on how sure. that culture would look. Okay. That's why you have the team to do it because everybody does something a little different. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds great. Cool. So, so maybe um, one of the things that, that we can put up this week then is a spreadsheet or a Google Doc to where people can add um, the grant opportunities to it. And then maybe part of our, maybe part of our weekly sort of routine is gonna be that we all sort of look at, at that spreadsheet together, um, talk about which, which things are most interesting, what we wanna do, what we do. Could we do it in uh, GitHub? Would you mind that? Um, I'm, I'm up for anything. What, okay. how, what would the uh, format be? Would it be like in an issue tracker? Would it be a- It'd Just be a table and you just do pull requests to add to the table. Okay, sure. Oh, that sounds fine to me. Okay, which is one less. I, I'm always trying to keep, like as soon as we go like many different sources of information, that's all. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. So okay. there's, um, there's like a uh, GitHub flavored markdown, I think supports mm -hmm. tables. Yep. Like with, the, with the little bars. Um, yeah, we use it in the metrics page. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. And so just issuing pull requests to that might be the, do the trick, because I don't think it's a big table, right? No, uh, it would be like... Um, agency, link, description. Yeah, agency, link, description, and, and then maybe our assessment of priority. So we're probably yeah. going to talk through and talk through each one of these and say, oh, this is something we really want to go for this is low priority, forget it, not worth it. Or maybe we could even use Sean's language, which is like, this one appears to be a direct hit. Th this one seems a little out of band. But. Right, yeah. So some, some expression of priority. Okay. Probably um, like a due date would be a yeah. column or, okay. or an action date or something like that. So th that's all, something like that. Okay, that sounds good. Um, just if, uh, <laughs> to forewarn you, you may want to set your expectations super duper low, just right out of the gate. So sometimes oh. these sometimes these funding rates are in the single digits. Yeah, so personally my expectations, uh, I'd be just fine with, with uh, you know, very, very low hit rate. I mean, this is more, I mean, this seems interesting to me because you guys are in the grant business. So it seems like this could be a way of, of, um, it's a way of supporting work, particularly on these kind of industry academic collaborations. Yeah. These are, this is a very important angle for many agencies. Right. So it seems like it could support you and Sean and, and yeah. you know, the students that you guys, um, mentor it seems like you know we might actually learn something yeah. uh, um i mean i'm looking at these uh, ns nsf um focus areas and it's like oh okay well you know there's actually valuable information just in just in reading through this for me mm -hmm. you know, knowing knowing what funders are interested in is is um is an interesting thing there's probably going to be networking you know, i just see a lot of benefits coming okay. from it whether or not the dollar volumes are higher or okay, not. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. All right, that's good. You can also take a look, just so you know, I've got a rule too, but you can also take a look at what has been funded, mm -hmm. which is also pretty revealing out of programs as well. Right. So just in your, in your spare internet time. Yeah. Yeah, just browse around there. Okay, I got to go. Okay. I have so, a meeting I have to get to as well. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Okay, thanks, bye. <clears throat> so I think that's everything we had on our agenda, talking about software and talking about grants. Is, is there anything else? Uh, uh, is there anything that anybody else wants to discuss? Do we have um, 
action items assigned. I marked down that we have an action item for creating a pull request of the focus area that we defined, but we didn't assign someone to do it. So this would be taking the document that we worked on with the table and the questions for labor investment and adding that as a pull request to the repository. Yeah. So if there's no takers, I'll do that. That'd be quite easy for me to knock out. And I will also um, put a grant table. Uh, so put me down uh, for um, a pull request to add a table of potential grants to the um, to the repo. Okay. Were there any other action items that we identified? I have two right now. And um, I think for next week, um, we need to talk more about software. So it looks like we've got a lot of agreement on approach. Um, and, you know, we're going to use Augur, basically. Uh, but exactly how that, uh, how it's going to be done and who's going to do the work is something that we need to discuss next week. Okay, I uh, put together the agenda, or I started to put together the agenda from for next week. That's great. Good. I think this was really fruitful discussion today. Sure. Getting the labor investment focus area advanced. It's really good. Yep, I agree. So uh, maybe we should wrap it up. And I say thank you very much uh, for everyone joining us today. And I will see you next week. OK, just as a note, since I was no checker, I am going to send out the meeting minutes. OK, see you all next time. See you guys. Bye.